What if you had a chance to make a film about your life? What stories would you tell? Would you only choose to tell the highlights? I went to college. Played professional soccer. Played in magnificent stadiums. In this case, I choose to tell it differently. I choose to tell my story in reverse. My name is Santa Maria Rivera. I come from a very tough place. I would not be the person I am today if it weren't for the opportunities that this sport was able to give me. The journey backwards starts with where I am today. The coach of a select youth soccer team, where every day I am reminded of the true meaning of the game in ways I could have never imagined. Hey, so get out there. Like I always said, work harder than your opponent and you will do well. No foul, no foul, no foul. Coaching these kids allows me to see the potential that this game has to change young people's lives. It allows them to see themselves in ways they could have never imagined. Somehow, since I was a kid, I always believed that there was something else better out there, and soccer was able to provide it for me. This is the place where my parents migrated to after we crossed the border. You could almost say, that working in the fields was kind of the, the initiation to the American way of life. You know, I can look back and puts everything into perspective. This box is at the end of the day were the means to an end where my, where my parents were able to provide a better quality of life for me and my family. When I get a chance to come to Yakima to visit my mother, I feel like a kid again. She has been the best coach any player could ever ask for. She taught me about teamwork, about never letting go, and always believing that we will get across and we will triumph. For me, this house symbolizes that we made it, that our family made it. You know, even though it's a very humble house, it was, it was a significant step into integrating ourselves into the American way of life and the feel of belonging to this country. We're about to get to my mom's house. This is the house that I grew up in. Very family oriented. Uh, that's my two younger siblings. And, uh, and that is that shirt and then we were in the national championship at Seattle University and after we won it I gave it as a gift to my mother and over here we have uh, when I played for the Sounders that was my my rookie year Cuando, cuando te llorabas porque yo no podía pagar para que jugaras fútbol 25 dólares y tú siempre llorabas porque yo no podía pagar. Son muchas cosas. Pero como te digo, dejando atrás de eso ahora todo es muy bonito. Seeing the tears in my mother's eyes reminded me of the time when we made the choice to leave the country of my birth. The next chapter of this film takes us back to Mexico, south of the border, where everything is not as it seems. I always jump at the opportunity to get to go back to my roots, to my culture, to mi gente, to my people. But it is a very complex place 
especially when you're standing at the bottom of a 20-foot wall, overlooking the other side, imagining how many people have crossed and perished, chasing the American dream. I'm caught up in this, this two worlds. I am not completely American. I come to Mexico, and I am not completely Mexican. It was really tough for me leaving Mexico. When I was that young and so innocent, I only knew two things. We were going up to El Norte, the north, and we were going across the hill, El Cerro. That's all I knew. I remember we going over, walking over to a park. I didn't know at the time, but my parents were actually scouting. My dad was scouting the place, looking for the right person, the right coyote, to get you across with the right price. We spent the whole day there at the park, and right at, in the evening, we followed the coyote, the guide, and we got across. And I mean, it was intense. You had to follow directions to a, down to a T. I mean, if you didn't listen to him, you, you could be left behind. Like, it's a little bit merciless, you could say. I think that's the longest I've ever held my mom's hand. Eight, 10 hours without ever letting go. As I head deeper into the heart of Mexico and into Morelia, the first thoughts that come to mind is how soccer and religion are so intertwined. In Mexico, soccer is a religion. And in this religion, the only word that matters is golazo, meaning the brilliant goal. The goal that brings 100,000 people to their knees, unifies countries, and makes gods out of men. In order to be a successful soccer player, you have to rely on your teammates 100% of the time. You can't do it alone. You can't win games alone. You have to have faith in your teammates that they, that they have to get the job done. I see this, this very innocent kid who just had huge dreams, who, who was here really pursuing what he wanted to do, you know, chasing the dream trying to play professional soccer. You had to earn your stripes. You had to play in the dirt fields, in the muddy fields. And I remember, I remember the coaches very clearly telling the players, I can piernas, make legs, literally. Meaning you will get stronger, your legs will get bigger, so you can develop muscle, so you can develop your quickness. There's one place that I needed to see. This is where the dream was alive. This is where I knew I could become a young professional. You know, it's not easy coming back. Especially when I look back and it just reminds me of those days where soccer was everything to me. I wish I was 17 years old again and be that kid who didn't want nothing else but to be out there playing in a dirt field and it's good to be here though regardless of whatever the emotions I might feel on the other side of every dream there's a reality and that is where the next step in my journey takes me the last time I put my hands on my father, it was my fist. The last time I got to see him was behind a glass panel at the Yakima County Jail a few days before he got deported back to Mexico. I didn't know what to expect. It had almost been 10 years since the last time I saw him. Siempre jugabas, pero andabas de estar siempre fuiste bueno. Me acuerdo que llegaste a hacer, dices que querías ser como Hugo Sánchez en los 80 y 85, cuando tenías cuatro años. Nos pasábamos juntos diciéndome que tú ibas a ser un gran campeón. Yo supe que, supe que fuiste profesional desde que viniste a Morelia y sabía que ibas a ser un gran jugador. Supe que estabas con, con Sanders. 
Pero no supe. No supe el día que empezaste a jugar. Porque estamos distanciados, pues, estamos distanciados. No te disfruté. No disfruté de tus jugadas. Lo que tú sabes hacer con el balón. Separado por 10 años, yo sé que eso. Siempre fuiste su bueno, te apoyé de chavalito. Cuando estábamos en, cuando estábamos en la middle school, high school, siempre fuiste el número uno. Toda la gente te apoyaba en las jugadas que tú te hacías. Eso fue lo que recuerdo. Siempre me ha gustado el fútbol. Y no disfruté de tus juegos, de las jugadas que tú haces. And I didn't know if he was going to be genuine or dishonest. But his tears and his embrace told me otherwise. Told me that he was very and incredibly happy to see me. Life is full of unexpected lessons. I would have never imagined my dad to become the greatest teacher of them all. He taught me what choices not to make. His way of living enabled me to see life in a different light, a life full of love, joy, beauty, and a passion for football. And all these things are alive and well by the edge of the sea. You know what, uh, ever since I can recollect coming to this place. I have this visual of coming up through, uh, through the terrace road as we come up to the beach, to the property. And you literally come off this little bluff, and after the bluff, all you see is just the blue Pacific Ocean. And I, I dream of it. I had a vision, I saw a house, I saw my family, I saw my kids, I saw my wife. And I said to myself, I want to live here someday. You couldn't be any further from civilization. You are on your own. You know, just running up and down this beach is, I feel the presence. I can literally say I can feel the presence of my grandfather here. Oh my. Many dark rooms Uh, this is my grandmother, Maria Antonia Gomez Sanchez. She is 82 years old. 82 years young. ¿Qué es lo que significa la palabra familia para usted? No, es una cosa grande para mí esto. Sí. Uh, she says it is a family means it's a very, very big word for her. And. She's a woman of very few words, but I, I understand what she's trying to say. <laughs> ¿Le gusta el fútbol? ¿Mm? ¿Le gusta el fútbol? Sí. ¿A qué equipo le va? Nena. Pues yo ya ahorita tengo harto que no oigo, pues, pero las chivas iban bien, pues. She's a chivo fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's very close my heart, to my mom's family is part of who we are. My grandpa left his life here. He worked the property all his life. My mother was born literally on the beach. This is what gave them, you know, the strength, the will to go on every day. So it's a very special place to me. You know that place where the sun shines so brightly and the people are so warm. Where the sea wind hits you in a certain way and the sea salt sticks to your skin like no other place. That is what Suatnejo reminds me of. And this is the first place I called home.
This is where I lived the first three years of my life. I lived with my, with my dad's sister and uh, her husband happened to be a great, great man. She coached for 20 plus years. Every single day he coached every single one of the boys in this town. And it happens to be that this tournament, that this tournament is named after him. The tournament is called Chelis. Everybody just called him Chelis. And when he died, the whole town shut down and everybody And every single one of the players that he coached. <laughs> went to the funeral. There was like 5,000 people at the funeral. This is just a regular guy who had so much love for this game, who gave so much of his time and energy for it. <laughs> and he was one of the guys, one of the people in my life that truly had a, an unbelievable passion for the game and everybody loved him for it. In the game of football, all you need is passion. Passion is and will always be the primary ingredient to succeed in this sport. Never, everything's got to start somewhere, right? Uh, this is, this place, this field, this people, it's where everything began for, for my mom and dad and myself. I mean, I was born five, 10 minutes from here. This is Watnejo. And uh, as you can tell, soccer here is king. This place, this field, this is where, where I was first introduced to the game. It's where I first knew that I was a competitive kid and I hated losing and I wanted to win every little game that I played in. Siempre siempre con esa motivación y y levantarse temprano para ir a entrenar y llegar y y a darle más otra vez. Desde un principio de cuando estaba morrito, él le gustaba mucho jugar fútbol. Casi nació ya con el balón en en los pies. No, you can tell it's not the first time they kicked the ball. They've been doing this since they probably started walking. This this passion, this this is what the game is about. Saludos para México. There is this poem that I read during one of my classes at Seattle University. The name of the poem is A Most Improbable Life. I envision myself when I read that title. That title is just me and my life as a footballer. So, at the end of telling my story, I wonder if I told it the right way. Mention every highlight, cover all the right places and people. My story has not moved in a straight line. That is more of a cycle, a story that ends where it begins, with a round leather ball and a dream. Soccer means to me a lifetime of memories, a lifetime of friendships, and a lifetime of opportunities to get to see the world. I represent the passionate player, the passionate fan, the passionate coach, the passionate kid that someday dreams of scoring the ultimate goal for his team, for his club, for his country. Today, I find myself giving back to the sport that I love so much and that I will always hold dear to my heart. I am a youth soccer coach. And every time I'm around these kids, and every time I get to share my knowledge of the game with them, I see a lot of myself in them.